Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, we are going to discuss the wide band frequency modulation. Now, when we are discussing the wide band frequency modulation, the condition KF80 very very less than one no longer holds true. So our calculations are now much more complicated. Now, what scientists thought initially that because this frequency spectrum is going to lie in between the minimum and maximum frequency which is omega c minus k, k, kf mp and omega c plus kf mp so the bandwidth of this wide band uh, frequency modulated signal is going to be 2 kf mp unfortunately they were wrong why they were wrong we will see in this video now i have a message signal m of t i have approximated this message signal by staircase approximation so the signal m of t is approximated by pulses of constant amplitude for convenience each of these pulses will be called as a cell now to ensure this m bar of t which is my actually my approximated constant amplitude pulses as all the information of the message signal m of t i need to follow the nequest criteria which is that the next wave sampling rate should be greater than or equal to the two times of the maximum frequency the maximum frequency of the message signal in this case is going to be the bandwidth of the message signal which is going to be 2b now if i take the reciprocal it means that i am going to have because 1 by fs is going to be ts so this will be and again the inequality sign is going to change it's going to reverse so this will be ts less than or equal to 1 by 2b let me call this ts as t so t will be less than or equal to 1 by 2b for convenience we are going to take t is equal to 1 by 2b where b is the bandwidth of the message signal to ensure m bar of t has all the information of m of t the cell weight in m of t must be no greater than the Nyquist interval interval of 1 by 2 b seconds thus m of, m of t is approximated by constant amplitude pulses or cells of weight t is equal to 1 by 2 b second now this staircase approximation is basically my rect signals so each of these is basically my rect signal and we know that the Fourier transform of a rect signal is a sync function. So that's why we are going to have sync functions corresponding to each of these cells, corresponding to each of these pulses. So we are going to have sync functions. For example, if I take one of the cell, which is for example this cell, whose time is t of k. Correspondingly, I am going to have a sync function which is equal to omega c plus k f m of t of k. Similarly, I am going to have sync functions for the other uh, staircase approximations or for the other rect functions as well. So I am going to have a sync function for this pulse, for this pulse, for this pulse, for all of these pulses. Now the leftmost uh, pulse, the sync function is going to be, the center of this sync function is going to be omega c minus kf mp. And for the rightmost pulse where the amplitude is maximum, my uh, frequency center frequency is going to be omega c plus kf mp because the minimum and maximum amplitudes of the cells are minus mp and mp respectively hence the minimum and maximum frequencies of the sinusoidal fung of the sinusoidal pulses corresponding to the fm signal for all the cells are omega c minus kf mp and omega c plus kf mp so this corresponds to my minimum amplitude this corresponds to my maximum amplitude and all the other sync functions will be in between those, these two functions. Now, if, if I take the center of these two, this bandwidth is going to be equal to, this bandwidth is going to be equal to bandwidth from here to here. The bandwidth from here to here will be equal to maximum minus minimum. So, this will be equal to 2kfmp. But we have this portion left, which is to the left side of this, and this portion also left. Now the spectrum of each sinusoid pulse spreads out on either side of the frequency by 2 pi divided by t, which means that it will it is going to spread out by 2 pi multiplied by 2b, which is equal to 4 pi b. 
so my this portion from here to here is also 4 pi b and this portion from here to here is also 4 pi b because the spectrum of each sinusoid pulse sp spreads out on either side of the frequency by 4 pi b now it means that my minimum and maximum frequency my maximum frequency will be omega c plus kf mp plus 4 pi b and my minimum frequency will be omega c minus kf mp minus 4 pi b as a result the total frequency will be the total bandwidth will be total bandwidth i am going to write over here total bandwidth will be 2 kf mp plus 8 pi b so the point which pioneers missed was this 8 pi b because they did not include the spreading effect because if we have a simple sinusoid which is everlasting sinusoid whose frequency is omega that sinusoid that everlasting sinusoid of frequency omega has a, has its entire spectrum concentrated at omega as all its spectrum co components concentrated in the omega this is true for the everlasting sinusoid for a sinusoid of finite duration the spectrum is spread out on either side by 2 pi divided by t so the pioneers or the scientists missed out the spreading effect so the total bandwidth will be 2 kf mp plus 8 pi b now this is an angular frequency domain if i am to write this in terms of hertz i am going to divide this by 2 pi so this will be 1 divided by 2 pi into this 2 kf mp plus 8 pi b which means that this will be equal to 2 kf mp divided by 2 pi plus 8 pi b divided by 2 pi let me name it as equation 3 now we know that the frequency deviation is equal to kf mp divided by 2 pi so let me write this in frequency deviation so this portion is actually my frequency deviation this is actually my delta f so this can be written as 2 delta f plus 4b so the wide bandwidth of the frequency modulator signal is 2 delta f plus 4b or this can be written as 2 into lf plus 2b let me name this as equation a and b So now the bandwidth from our approximation comes out to be 2 del f plus 2 b. But we can realize something over here. In case of the narrow bandwidth this del f is approximately equal to 0. Because in that case that kf a of t is very very less than 1. So if del f is approximately equal to 0 the bandwidth which is the narrow band fm signal then that will be equal to 4 b. But we have found earlier that the narrow band fm is equal to 2b, not 4b. So that's why this factor 2 should be replaced by 1. So actually when we apply the correction factor, the actual wide bandwidth of the fm signal is actually 2 into del f plus b, which is my equation c. This formula is known as the Carson rule. This result or this formula is known as the Carson's rule. So Carson determined the wide bandwidth of the tone modulated signal. Now if I define a term deviation ratio which is equal to del f divided by b, I can write, I can also write this in terms of deviation ratio. So again this wide band fm is going to be equal to if I take the b common from here. So I am going to get 2 into b del f divided by b plus 1 so this will be 2 into b beta plus 1 where beta is the deviation ratio so both equations c and d are very important equation and they are used to find the wide bandwidth of the frequency modulated signal now this was for the frequency modulated signal 
the same equations can be used to find the wide band of the phase modulated signal so the same equations equation c and d can be used to find the wide band of the phase modulated signal so these equations are used to find the wide band of the frequency modulated signal as well as the phase modulated signal but in case of the phase modulated signal we know that we have omega i is equal to omega c plus kp of m dot of t which is the derivative of t so in this case delta f which is equal to kp mp this mp is going to be the maximum amplitude of the derivative of the message signal in case of fm this mp was the maximum amplitude of the message signal in this case mp is going to be the maximum amplitude of the derivative of the message signal but same equations can be applied to find the bandwidth of the fm modulated signal as well as the phase modulated signal thank you